Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining. My name is Coach Ray Z, and welcome to episode 31 of Athletic Definition. Uh, today, I am going to be talking about my uh, upcoming, probably, I think it's about three weeks away, uh, uh, my 15th consecutive Los Angeles Marathon. Uh, but just besides talking about it to make it a little bit more entertaining, I also have uh, every medal that I have earned along the way, which I'll be showing close up, front and back. Uh, and kind of, you know, recently I was asked why I got started running. And it kind of caught me off guard because uh, I only had a few minutes to answer. And it's such a loaded question that I, I couldn't answer it in, in, in just like a couple minutes. Um, and so it kind of made me think about it a little bit more and, and uh, you know, I, I just wanted to share basically uh, the reason why I started running more seriously. Uh, you know, I've always been active, uh, never uh, like really gifted as far as like recruits are looking at me or anything. Just a big uh, passion for sports and athletics. And I remember being a little kid and and seeing the marathon on TV and I didn't even understand what a distance of a marathon was, but it caught me my interest enough where I was like, I want to do that one day. And years went by and never did it. And I uh, would like in Los Angeles, you'd, you'd kind of always hear about it. Uh, you know, the marathon, it, it would always be on local TV and, uh, just years would pass by and, and I never did it. And then, um, you know, I, I was uh, really depressed. I was going through a divorce, basically. And I lost my mojo. And I was really, really kind of going crazy. Uh, didn't really know what was going on. And I was really, really depressed. And I'm like, I need something to get my mojo back. I need something, you know, to to help me get back to the person I know I, I was. And uh, I'm like, I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do, kind of like a bucket list thing. And uh, a marathon was one of them. And so then I said, I'm going to sign up for LA Marathon. And I did. And this was back in 2007. So I signed up for Los Angeles Marathon. And then once I signed up, and I, I started telling people about it, um, a lot of people started doubting me and telling me I couldn't make it. And and that kind of uh, motivated me uh, in, in, in strange ways, because um, one is I had no idea what a marathon is. And, you know, this is very common where people be like, Oh, I want to run a 5k marathon. Well, a 5k is 3.1 miles, which you're short about, 23.1 miles so a marathon is 26.2 miles and uh people always kind of get that confused but i never knew what that was i didn't know how to train for it uh but i knew that i was depressed and even some of my family members bet against me they're like he's not going to be able to finish and i didn't train for it i was partying a lot uh big mistake uh but there i go just with my kind of a emotions basically into the marathon not properly training and here comes i believe uh it's mile 16 and i was feeling pretty good up up, up until then for not training um at the time I, i'll be honest i was drinking a lot partying and um i started cramping from the top of my waist to the bottom of my ankle and i could just feel it on both legs and i thought i was done i Thought I was going to have to tap out and, and quit the my first marathon. And uh, I heard all these voices of the people telling me I couldn't do it. And that, that, that pushed me through. And I remember that year they had a Sprint out there. So Sprint, the phone company. And they would uh, they had people who would run with you and you could make a phone call. Um, cell phones were still kind of coming up. Uh, but, you know, they were expensive and these people would run with you and let you make a phone call. And uh, I called and I got some wor words of encouragement, called my family. And uh, I really don't know how I did it, 
uh, besides maybe just pure emotion and 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 heart, because uh, you know I've never been that gifted athlete. And I finished my first marathon, and this is a uh, 2007. This is the medal that I earned. It's very uh, kind of classic, very throwback. Not, I mean, nothing very fancy. And back then, they used to kind of give you the pin. And the pin uh, matched the shirt, and they would give you a poster. It seems they've gotten a little cheap over the years. Um, you know, they, they've sold uh, the company a few different times. And, um, but, you know, I was very proud. This was my first marathon, something I thought I, in the back of my head, I, I really wasn't sure if I could do it. So when I accomplished it, it made me think, well, what else can I do? What else is possible? And um, uh, it took me a month to walk right because of the lack of proper training. I'm not going to say that it was all sunshine and rainbows because it, it wasn't. It was uh, difficult. Uh, not training is something that I don't recommend it. You you see it here and there on YouTube now. Oh, I ran a marathon without training. Uh, and yeah, it's very possible, all depending on your age and how your health is. Would I recommend it? No. I would say I probably ran maybe my first 20 marathons without properly training and a lot of partying. Uh, this November 7th will be my 55th total marathon and my 15th consecutive alley marathon. And, uh, you know, after this and taking about a month to walk properly, I told myself, well, um, um, that's it. It was one and done. I'm, I'm happy. I'm ready to move on. But in the back of my head, I was like, why, why do I feel so sore? I thought I was in good shape. I thought I was healthy. And I think it was about maybe seven months later, I found myself enrolled in Long Beach Marathon. And I went at it again. And that's kind of how it all snowballed and, and then I'm like, well, okay, now I have a couple marathons. And next year comes around, Alley Marathon 2008. And I did it. I did it again. Um, this year, uh, I, I really actually liked the, the logo they did. The, I have the poster still, uh, the shirt. They still gave the, the cool uh, pin. Um, and from this 2008 memory, um, what I what I remember the most is I used to uh, box at uh, Pasadena Villa Park and a lot of good boxers up there. One of the top boxers there, uh, he, uh, he ran the marathon. I didn't know he was going to run it. And uh, I seen him at the finish line and he was really, really hurting. And he's like, this is one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. And to me, that was really like my third marathon. And I'm like, well, wow. That that's pretty cool because at least on the in the boxing level, this is a person that I was like, well, man, this guy's on a different level. And if he's saying that this is tough, I don't know, for some reason it just kind of stuck to me. And that's the memory I have of, of the 2008. And then in uh, 2009, they uh, went a little bit more fashionable. They added some color to the ring. They were still, uh, they gave the matching shirt. This is the pin. And this is the medal right here. Uh, the back right here, it's just basically enough for you to put your, your name on it. And um, this route was cool. Um, so when I, when I, this marathon started in 1984, um, and when I did it, the route changed every two years. So this route, I couldn't exactly tell you, but I know I ran through some parts of like USC, the Los Angeles Coliseum, South Central LA, um, and then this one, this one kind of kind of started trying to gear more towards like the Hollywood area. And I know, I believe I started on Coanga, and we would run down Hollywood Boulevard into downtown LA. So the the course kind of changed, and uh, you know, just having fun, doing marathons, um, and. After 55 marathons, it's kind of hard to give details exactly on every one, but that one was just a good one. Uh, this next one was the 25-year anniversary for Los Angeles Marathon. 
And uh, this was the 2010 LA Marathon. And this is when they came up with uh, Stadium to the Sea, which it, it ended uh, last year. I'm very disappointed in that. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit more details on it. But this is the medal for Stadium to the Sea. It was a 25-year anniversary. And and uh, the back of the medal is very plain, actually nothing on it. Um, the ribbon's pretty cool. And they kind of started going cheap, no more pin. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Los Angeles Marathon. And uh, I've always tried to be ambassador, got rejected. Uh, and at this point, when I see the ambassadors, I don't even apply for it. I'd rather just give you my honest opinion of the whole Los Angeles Marathon. Um, at one point, the McCormick, which is, he was a former owner of the Dodgers, he was going through some sort of nasty divorce and uh, the, the public was not happy with him. Somehow they ended up in a way selling the Los Angeles marathon because it was, it was just like getting a negative vibe because of that divorce thing crossing over and um, they sold it. And then I, I think it went to Iron Man and now it's back with the McCormick's again, um, oddly enough. The people, maybe maybe generations have passed enough, but they're, they're back with it. And if I was an ambassador or something, I wouldn't be able to speak my honest truth about it. I'd probably have to say it's all sunshine and rainbows, but I personally don't like the ending. So this was one of the best ideas. That the, the marathon uh, started in uh, Dodger Stadium, and it still starts at Dodger Stadium. And you go through all the key points of Los Angeles, like the iconic parts especially if you've never been here, you want to, you know, run, running is a kind of a good way to sightsee, maybe things that you would never normally see. And so you, you start off in Dodger Stadium and you work your way through Chinatown and all these different neighborhoods where you see all the different ethnicities out there uh, cheering you on, go through Echo Park, go through downtown, the Disney Council Hall. And, um, uh, then you go on to like Hollywood Boulevard and you can actually see the Hollywood sign as you're running through and uh, you go through Hollywood Boulevard and then you go down to Sunset Boulevard, which is another iconic. If, if you've never been here uh, to Los Angeles, that's, you know, very, very touristy. So people want to go through there and then you go down to Rodeo Drive and then you cut down through Culver City and then the marathon would finish right there in Santa Monica uh, Beach, or where the pier is at. Uh, perfect ending. Um, you know, you, you get to see all the great parts of LA, and you finish at the beach. And uh, I'll get into it more, but this year they they changed the route. The ending isn't there, but um, this year was one of their record-breaking years. They probably had maybe like. 25,000 participants. I remember people kind of abandoning their cars on the freeway, just trying to get to the starting line. And uh, this was a, a good, a good memory. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I continue to run is uh, my friend, uh, Jason, uh, Jay Sedillo, and then his brother. And uh, we've, they started coming with me to LA Marathon and every year. It's kind of like a tradition. So that's very cool. And now he's, got more marathons than me so uh it's nice to know that i inspired him and to start running uh because he thought that he was stronger than me and that's okay with me like i'm like i don't really care what gets you motivated as long as you are active uh so this right here is the 2011 marathon and uh i do have some very vivid recollections about this one the medal is okay the shirt, I did not like it at all. It's pretty much like the ribbon. It was um, it was very John Cena-like, very bright orange Fruity Pebble. Um, and the reason I mentioned Fruity Pebble is because at the time, The Rock was battling with uh, Cena, and that's what he called him. And so it was a, this bright orange shirt that makes you look like a Caltrans worker, which is the people that have to do community service on the freeways. And uh, this year in Los Angeles Marathon, it rained, and it rained really, really hard. Um, and uh, I had sprained my ankle playing basketball two weeks prior to this marathon. And then uh, I sprained my other ankle just kind of slipping because it was raining. 
So to date, this is my longest marathon to finish. It took me about six hours and 56 minutes, and I ran it all in the rain. I got the early stages of hypothermia, and along the way, I wanted to quit. Along the way, people were dropping out like flies and getting those, uh, they're kind of like foil uh, sheets that you wear, and they keep you warm because they have medical tents all along the course. And I saw people, and I really wanted to quit, but I don't know. I don't know what kept me going. Uh, I crossed the finish sign. And this is the first time when when you cross the finish line, they ask you if you're okay, if you need medical attention. And this is the first time I said, yes, uh, I need medical attention. I needed help. I kind of like collapsed at the end of the, the crossing the finish line and, and firemen like one on this hand, shoulder and this carried me into this room. And it, it, this room was just had like other participants who were going through the same thing I was and there was just heat coming, dropping down. Uh, they took off your wet clothes and give you like dry towels. And you kind of just stayed there till you uh, came back to life a little bit. And, uh, you know, I always go with friends. And so they're waiting for me. They, none of them had the experience I did. They all finished faster. You know, I got in trouble early and then with the injuries. Um, and in, in some ways, uh, because of the, the gut check, uh, the, the, the mental struggle uh that i had to go through this is one of my favorite marathons and it's one of my more difficult marathons but one of my more favorite ones because i really had to dig deep uh to finish that one so that was a uh, 2011 and then um 2012 this is a medal for 2012 valley marathon this one is uh the back they just put where you can engrave your time but this is kind of cool because if you look through these numbers in the in the light, you can kind of see through them. So and then the ribbon uh, displays the the main iconic courses that you go through Los Angeles that I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, compared to the year before, it was nice weather, no rain. Actually, it has not rained since that year that hard. And so you know, this was a, another finish. Uh, very happy. But nothing uh, really like memorable compared to the year before, uh, and I, I guess that's a good thing. Then in 2013, uh, it was cool. Uh, it landed. Um, so typically, Los Angeles Marathon always is the first Sunday of March, uh, and this year it landed on St. Patrick's Day. So they came out with a special medal, and the same thing. If you look through this one, you can see the green, and the back. Uh, you can just, you know, write write your times, but the medal is pretty cool. And so I ran this one on St. Patrick's and the day before, I believe I did a, a beer pub run, which was fun. Same thing, uh, same course stadium to the sea. So if you can see, let me see if it's on here. Yeah. So on the ribbons, they write uh, stadium to the sea. So it's the same course and they kept this iconic course for, I believe 10 years, I think. I think it's 10 years and um, I think twice in the history of Los Angeles Marathon it has landed on St. Patrick's Day so that was cool I got uh, the shirt in my opinion sucked it was another like bright green John Cena-ish type shirt um, this medal is cool uh, this was 2014 this is the Los Angeles Marathon 2014 medal and as you can see, they're still keeping the stadium to see course, uh, very iconic. At some point, uh, they did run through like a some sort of federal park or national park, and they did have to change that a little bit uh, because I, I guess they wanted too much money. But the course generally stayed the same. Um, and uh, I you know, I, I've had two really good times that I'm proud of in Los Angeles Marathon. I, I still haven't had that breakthrough time in L.A. like I wanted to, but I'm, I'm hoping to have it this year. And I'm actually hoping to have it uh, my best marathon time ever. Um, and uh, moving on to 2015, this was a 30-year anniversary. So, of course, they made a cool medal uh, commemorating the, the marathon right here. You can see the dates. And uh, the course stayed the same, although the ribbon doesn't say it. The sponsors have changed through the years. And uh, 
another uh, good marathon. You know, I like the medals because they always kind of show a little something iconic about LA, Palm Trees, Dodger Stadium. And as I mentioned, Los Angeles Marathon is typically always the first week, weekend, Sunday of March. Uh, but once in a while, things change. So back in uh, 2016, uh, the Olympic trials were being held in Los Angeles. And even though it's in March, they they switched it to kind of coincide more with the, the Olympic uh, trials. And for the first time in history, the Los Angeles Marathon was on Valentine's Day. And uh, they came out with a, you know, special ribbon. The medal is very cool. Uh, the shirts were red. And there's the back of it. So the medals kind of started getting nicer and nicer. Although I still like the pin. I wish they would give the pin. Um, but yeah, that was uh, one of the rare times where it was not in March. And that was a February 14th uh, marathon. Now, the next, I would say, three medals kind of look a lot alike as far as like the ribbon and style. But if you look at the detail, um, uh, they're not. And, you know, they at this point, I guess they bought by they were bought by Conquer Endurance Group, which I think owned Ironman at the time. So this is the 2017 uh, Stadium to the Sea medal, one side, and you can see the Ferris wheel from Santa Monica, the ending, and Los Angeles. And then as I turn around, you'll see the stadium lights, the the Capitol Records building, and downtown City Hall on the medal. And they also have a challenge where if you do like their 5K and their half marathon, and this one, you, you, it's like the like Conquer LA Challenge, and then you get a bonus medal. I've never done that one. They, they, they are fairly expensive um, because I'm a native to Los Angeles, and this is the first marathon. Uh, I plan to do this one till the day I die, but they can be expensive. I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. And so the the 2018 uh, is the 33rd year that the marathon uh, was put on. It's still sticking to the same to the sea. A nice uh, LA just logo with a palm tree on the metal. And the back kind of shows a little bit of everything. Once again, the Capitol building, the lights from Dodger Stadium. Um, this one actually shows more of downtown LA because uh, it also shows the U.S. Bank, which is this one, the U.S. Bank, uh, Capital, U.S. Bank, I think it's called Bank Tower. I've uh, ran that, I've climbed that one twice. It's the largest uh, building west of the Mississippi. I did that one two years in a row, so kind of familiar with that. That's a nice medal as well. Pretty heavy, same thing. Um, and then the 2019, it's same thing, kind of. It shows you LA, palm trees. This one, they added a little bit of color to it. The same kind of like iconic uh, things of LA, palm trees. This was kind of like the logo for that year, those colors. And then uh, downtown LA, Dodger Stadium. And this one kind of shows the route a little bit. So this was a, a cool medal. Along the way, I couldn't exactly tell you what year. Uh, I got recognized by Los Angeles Marathon for being an LA loyal, which is my shirt right here. And so being an LA loyal is basically when you run the Los Angeles Marathon 10 years in a row. So I think by the time I got the title, it had been like 12 years. So it took me 12 years to earn this t-shirt and I'll show you the medal that I got because of being an LA loyal. But uh, before that, let me show you last year's medal now during covid uh los angeles marathon was probably the last major event to go down and then a week later everything got shut down so i was uh very fortunate uh to keep my streak going because it, it almost didn't happen and and this year to make it happen that's why it's november 7th it's typically always in march but to make it happen they're going to do it in november and then go back on 2022, back to March. And so this is uh, the medal for 
2020. Again, uh, a lot of the same iconic. And then there's the back of the metal, which blue is one of my favorite colors. Um, so this was the last year of Stadium to the Sea. Um, and, you know, that course was great. And overall, overall, up until Boston Marathon, there was a, well, the year that the bombing of Boston Marathon, um, they allowed people to be along the, almost at the end of the route where that's kind of where you need it the most. You, you just ran 26 miles and got like point two to go. And that's where people are cheering you on and they see your name on the bib and they're like, come on, Ray, you can do it. And um, they were no longer allowed ever since the Boston uh, bombing, which I understand, but at the same time, kind of took away some of that, the magic from the ending. Uh, but regardless, when, when you're completing it, uh, it's something you've earned, nothing given. And because uh, it was, I believe, their, what, 35 year, yeah, 35 year in 2020 anniversary, uh, they gave this commemorative medal, bonus medal, which the front is the replica of the first Los Angeles Marathon medal. And then the back, and they only gave it to the LA Loyals, which are people that have been Running this marathon, I mean, you have different levels. So if you've ran it two years in a row, you get a special bib. If you've done it five years, you get something else. And then you get capped out at 10. Uh, besides LA Loyals, there's called Legacy Runners, and that's in every race. If, if you've ran every race since the inception of the race, the marathon, the 5K, the half marathon, you're considered a Legacy Runner. And uh, in 35 years, which started in, what, 1984, there's about 114 legacy runners left for the Los Angeles Marathon. And, you know, if, when you really kind of think about me doing this 15 years in a row, uh, it's not easy. A lot of things happen. You're in, you're out. And when you hear some of these, some of these legacy runners are now in their 70s, 60s, and still going and and I love that, but you know, uh, you know, through through the year, people will die, people will be born, celebrations, weddings, um, all kinds of things that will happen, and that's all part of your training. And so it's very easy to give up and uh, not continue, and uh, you know, maybe not even sometimes give up because I've known some people uh, personally that have done it, and they, you know, they had like a their granddaughter born and they'd rather see and witness their granddaughter be born than uh, finish Sally marathon, even though they trained so hard. I, I have a buddy who did that. He actually uh, trained really hard for three years and a couple of years he, um, he missed it, you know, but he wouldn't give up those moments for the world. And then when he finally completed it, because he wasn't the fastest when he got to the finish line, there was no medal. And um, it happens a lot in uh, running, unfortunately. And sometimes it's because the organizers don't buy sufficient medals. Some people will call them uh, bandit runners. And a bandit runner is someone who basically gets a fake duplicate bib and runs the race, didn't pay for it, and then collects the medal. And um, I don't. 100% believe that that's the reason because I'm still waiting for my Los Angeles Marathon shirt from last year. I've sent them a message. haven't heard nothing. Um, they told me, the, and they're volunteers, and they told me, here, write your email, and they'll contact you. And I'm like, you know, the race basically is up to $200. And if I pay $200, I don't feel that I need to be putting my information for you to send me what you promised me in the beginning. It's now more than a year and I still haven't received my shirt. Not that I really care about the shirt. I saw the design. I saw that people wear it. It's ugly. To me, it's a principle. And um, like I said, I still love Los Angeles Marathon. I'm probably their biggest ambassador that uh, is not legitimate their ambassador. I, I promote the Los Angeles Marathon because uh, it helped me uh, become a better person and the diversity and the passion and the neighborhoods that you run through and 
as I mentioned previously in other episodes, when you run LA Marathon, Los Angeles is such a melting pot. It's such a diversity. It's so beautiful in that way. If you're a racist or have prejudice, you're not going to enjoy it. And really, you're not welcome here. But if you're a nice person, come on down to California, sign up, do the Los Angeles Marathon. Uh, you run through Mexican neighborhoods. You run through Salvadoranian neighborhoods. You run through Chinatown. You have the them drumming for you to come up. You drive through West Hollywood. You drive through the Jewish neighborhoods. You drive through the Indian neighborhoods, the Pakistani neighborhoods. I mean, it is just so great. You see kids, adults, older people, and you know, there are all little different sections in Los Angeles, and you run through all of them, and they're all out there supporting you, cheering you on, complete strangers. And that's why I'm saying if, if you're a racist or anything, you're not going to enjoy the course because you're going to see everything. I mean, from guys dressed in cheerleaders to West Hollywood, uh, to uh, Jewish people, to a bunch of people, you know, are racist towards the Latin. So if, if you're not into that, don't come down. But if not, you're going to enjoy it because isn't that beautiful to have that diversity of so many people just come and support you and just read your name and say, you can do it. You can finish. And they're out there giving you water and Gatorades out of their own pocket, uh, pretzels, oranges. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And the last medal I want to show is basically the LA loyal medal that I got, which took me like 12 years to earn. And this is also like a replica of, I think one of the first medals, but this one's in gold. And then the back shows uh, L.A. Loyal. And so I found out the numbers. I couldn't tell you. There's uh, more L.A. Loyals, but still not that many. Uh, compared. There's about 114 L.A. Legacy runners left. And uh, I couldn't tell you now in the L.A. Loyal. Um, just because... Uh, they haven't put out the numbers. They did the first time they released the program, but uh, I know they're still keeping it going. As far as I know, after 10 years, they're capped out, so I won't get no additional bonuses. Uh, the only thing that they did give out, which, like I said, I, I like the pin, is this little Alley Loyal pin. And uh, I, I wish they would still give it out with the medals. Uh, that's something I'm going to do in the future. That, uh, you know, I'm, I'm such a big race fanatic that. And I'm not talking about all races and all race organizers, but there's some uh, races that are small. And uh, I understand why you have volunteers and you're probably not making much money. But then you have these races that are very, very large and you're charging people $200, $220, $250. And I understand you need to get like paramedics and permits from the cities and multiple cities because the course is going through different. But when you're buying shirts in bulk and medals in bulk, and then you, everyone out there is the race community volunteering, you're not paying them, you're profiting a lot of money. Uh, like I, I did the math on a couple of these, so you can be sure that you can buy extra medals so that, um, like my friend that waited three years to complete his marathon, uh, isn't left out without the medal. And yes, they mailed it to him, but what an experience of uh, running 26.2 miles to cross the finish line. There's no medal for you. Uh, I, in some ways, I would be disappointed, but, you know, the, he's just such a nice guy that, you know, he, he took it fine and didn't make a big deal about it. They mailed it to him. And like I said, I paid $200 and I still haven't got my shirt from last year. And I don't want the shirt. It's just the principle that, these race organizers should really take care of the people participating. It's not like I only ran the race once. Do you know, like if they know how many people I have brought personally to LA marathon that have never ran a marathon that have run it. And then when you pay $200 for a shirt, not to have it. And if I would have, you know, had the opportunity to be an ambassador, I wouldn't be saying this. So I'm glad I, I'm actually not an ambassador for them. And I, get to tell you the truth. The truth is the course is great. The race is great. The people in LA are great. Uh, with the race organizers, they keep getting bought and sold all the time. 
I went back to the McCormick's, which through LA, as far as I know, and I remember, because I was there, the fans weren't happy, and they wanted him to sell it. And now it's right back to the original race organizer. So we'll see what happens uh, with that. Regardless, uh, I plan to run it till uh, the day I die, and I'd rather uh, stay positive about anything than be negative. But if there is something negative to be said, that, that's how I feel about some major races and uh, during COVID. Uh, some of these race directors didn't make it. And um, to be honest with you, I hope the greedy ones didn't make it. And the ones that were loyal, I, I lost money. You know, a lot of people and I didn't offer refunds, uh, diff- different things. But the good race directors, um, like for the OC Marathon, I'm an ambassador for. They give the runners options. Do you do you want to run a virtual? Do you want your money back? Do you want to defer it to the next year? Um, or if we can get perm- – actually, they're going to do it the same day, November 7th. So Orange County will be doing their marathon the same day. And then they give the option to the people, well, if you can't make it, if you're still not sure because of the shots, come run it in 2022. Defer it easy. And that's how I feel race directors should be because without the runners – who are you when it's such a small percentage of people that run a marathon? It's like 0.05% of the population. Uh, the money's being made in the half marathons, but the marathoners, it's like we're, we're paying a lot of money, uh, not even to uh, get what you promise. So I, I hope uh, that'll change. And if anybody from Los Angeles Marathon would like to come on and explain to me, uh, and I can bring on the people because, uh, you know, I don't make these things up. I can explain to me how come sometimes when the slower runners finish, they don't have medals uh, besides the bandits that I mentioned or, um, you know, why they keep getting bought and sold all the time. And, and do they really care about the runners or is it just big money? Uh, because, I, you know, I'm a big racer. Um, I've seen this happen before. Uh, there's a company called Rock and Roll Marathon. Pasadena had their own marathon, which was a local city marathon. I was a legacy runner there. I did every race there. And then Rock and Roll came in, and the city's like, well, Rock and Roll is a bigger company. We can make more money. They didn't give the permits to Pasadena, the local race. The local race stopped doing the race. They kind of went bankrupt. Rock and Roll came in, did one half marathon, and then they abandoned Pasadena. And now Pasadena has no races. Uh, now Los Angeles Marathon is doing their Conquer LA part where it ends at the Rose Bowl. But I've seen it too many times where, you know, it's all about the money and the people that lose out are the runners and the running community. So I would really like to see uh, some changes in the, in the racing directors. And as I mentioned, not all of them are, are like that because there's plenty of them who say you volunteer and you get to run in our race for free and, I would just like to see the the greedy ones be uh, more thoughtful of, of the the runners, um, and that's pretty much it. Just some positive change. So I hope you enjoyed uh, me uh, showing you all the different medals that I've earned through uh, LA Marathon, and hopefully in a couple weeks I can show you the 15th consecutive Los Angeles Marathon. And uh, I have a friend named Sean. And who I invited him on, just trying to work out the dates. This year will be his uh, 20th consecutive Los Angeles Marathon. And I always try and surround myself with people that are better than me, that can push me, um, that I can uh, look uh, bigger and beyond things. So uh, he's one of the first persons that I knew that ran the marathon, even though I wanted to run it. But that's kind of like where it helped me out. So uh, I, Definitely like to bring him on and, uh, you know, give him his, his props that he well deserves because I remember uh, him telling me years ago that that was one of his goals. One is to hit 50 marathons and another one is to run 20 consecutive LA marathons. So this year will be 20 and uh, I would love to hear his takes. He's also done Ironman as well. And he, he's actually a sponsored Ironman uh, competitor. So, Hopefully I can get them on before LA Marathon. And uh, thank you everybody for joining. Tomorrow is Friday and um, 
I have a lot of things going on, so I'm not booking guests because I don't want to have to cancel them lately. But I have enough material where I can carry my own shows. So tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time zone on Athletic Definition, episode 32. Uh, as you know, if you've been listening to me, I'm a blue belt in jiu-jitsu since COVID, have not had the chance to practice. But one thing that happened to me when I was training is I got cut right here. I had stitches put on and uh, I needed goggles because the doctor told me to stop training. And it's really hard to find information on what to do for your eyes or how to protect them, especially for like jujitsu or freestyle wrestling. Uh, I found a couple of YouTube videos and, and the guy I mentioned he was going to do more, but he never did. And so from there, I kind of took it upon myself because uh, I kept training. Uh, the doctor said, take like a year or two off. And I'm like, you're crazy. And uh, I took a little bit more time off because I ended up hurting my knee. Uh, but I was back sooner than what the doctor recommended. I was doing goggles. And so tomorrow I'm going to be showing and discussing uh, the goggles that I used. Uh, they move around a lot what I use to hold them down, uh, what I use them, what I use to keep them from fogging up. What can you expect uh, to happen when you train with the goggles and just uh, where I got these ideas from as far as injury. And hopefully if someone gets an eye injury, they can uh, use the information that I provided to uh, do a makeshift uh, rig to protect your eyes and still keep training. I ended up using those goggles also for basketball. And, uh, I mean, they could be used a lot. And so I'll, uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about is, uh, what to do with, uh, eye injuries in jujitsu or freestyle wrestling. And then, uh, next week I will be back with, uh, my guest. I will have, uh, Laura who plays for the USA team, uh, but she doesn't play these typical sports, which will be very interesting to find out. Uh, cause to me, you know, it's like, Going back to when I was young and being able to travel and represent the USA, I mean, you know, I don't know if they realize it or not, but they're living a pretty nice life right now. That something they, they really need to cherish. These are memories they can look back on. Um, and then I'm working on either having a, uh, an ATG coach who's into martial arts or my other guest, which... Like I said, I have a lot of work. It's just scheduling as well. But uh, my other guests uh, possibly uh, may be, uh, geez, I'm trying to think who was it that told me. But I guess you could tune in tomorrow and I'll give you a better idea if I can get some confirmations for next week. But next week I will be back to guest and then we'll go from there. So thank you everybody much for joining. I'm... Tampa Bay is winning 21-7, to 7. so if you saw my other show, Football Examiner, I'm right on pace to win that game. Uh, the Dodger game has started. Go LA. LA loyal. And uh, besides that, uh, tune in tomorrow for uh, Athletic Definition, episode 32. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, and the last thing is, uh, if anybody does want to work out, see if I'm the right fit for you. I'm a kettlebell certified. I am a RCA running coach certified. I'm a US track and field level one certification. And I'm working on my NLP certification so I can help you with any sort of mind mental blocks uh, that are stopping you from maybe going from uh, fourth place to third place or from third to first. So uh, Definitely, uh, you can go to my website on the Fortune Cookie, which is www.coachrazy.com, and schedule a 30-minute complimentary uh, meeting with me, and we can go from there. So thank you, everyone, for joining. I will see you tomorrow.